Dad, I need your help. <laughs> Why, sure, Susie. What's on your mind? Oh, I have two tickets to the Wallabies concert this weekend, and I don't know who to invite. I was thinking maybe Laura, because she's new in town, but Pamela's been my best friend since forever, except that she's been ignoring me ever since she started going steady with Johnny. Well, here's the thing about friendships. Friendships are sort of like gift baskets. Each one has its own unique set of... Um, Okay, look, I was really kind of hoping this was going to be a Cocoa Pods question. Do you, do you have one of those for me? You're not a very good father. I know. <laughs> but seriously, Cocoa Pods, hit me. Um, well, now that you mention it, I've been noticing these podfile.lock files in my project, and I, what are those? Ah, so this is a question I can answer. So don't let that lock name confuse you. This, it's not like there's another Cocoa Pods process somewhere that's editing a file somewhere. See, a CocoaPods lock file is important in that it keeps track of every version of every library that CocoaPods has installed for you. You can think of it as something like a snapshot of exactly what CocoaPods has installed in your iOS project. That doesn't seem very important. It really just sounds like something that would satisfy my curiosity. Au contraire, sweetie. See, a lock file is very important if you're working together with a team. This will help you all make sure that all of your files are in sync. Really? How? Well, let's say that you and Mark are working on a project together. Uh, you two are still dating, right? Yep. You know how I feel about boys who put side effects in their getters. Don't really care, Dad. I love him anyway. <sighs> okay, you know what? Let's watch this. Okay, so let's say you go ahead and add a line like this to your pod file. Hey, that's the twiddle walker from the last video. Aw, oh, you watch. Now shut up, I'm talking. <laughs> now you run pod install. Now let's assume the latest version of our hypothetical library is 133. So you'll get that version added to your project. Now let's say a few days later, the author of the library updates it to version 1.4. You don't run pod update, so you're still happily plugging away on version 133. But now let's say Mark gets a copy of your project and he runs pod install. Well, without that lock file around, CocoaPods would just go out and install version 1.4 on his machine. If he starts using features that aren't in version 1.3, it could break your code when you merge in his changes. Uh, Dad, how does a lock file help? I'm getting to that. Be patient. Now, on the other hand, if you have your lock file checked into your project, it'll record what version you have installed. Then, when Mark runs pod install, even though version 1.4 is out there, CocoaPods will see that, according to your lock file, your project should only have version 1.3.3 installed. And so that's what it'll install for Mark. Now granted, if Mark, being the irresponsible boy he is who doesn't take the proper precautions, goes out and runs pod update without telling you, well then yes, CocoaPods will go out and grab version 1.4. But because that change is also reflected in the lock file, that will get merged in as well when you merge in Mark's code, so at least you'll be aware that something's changed. Oh, another nice feature of the lock file is that if you're tracking it in source control, you've got a very nice snapshot of every library you've installed at any given time. So if things suddenly break, you can use it to jump back in time and recreate the exact environment you had when you checked in the lock file. Hmm. That does seem useful. Say, as long as we're talking about source control, do you think that I should put my pod directory inside of my source repository of my project? Well, there's two schools of thought on that. One school of thought essentially looks at your pod directory as derived data. As long as you have both your pod file and your lock file checked into your project, and you should, then anybody could, in theory, recreate that environment at any time just by running pod install. Sure, but what if you don't have CocoaPods installed? Well, that's where the other school of thought comes in. They believe that because your pods directory contains essential files needed to run your project, you should absolutely check it in. That way, anybody could download your entire repository and run it, no other steps required. Yeah, although that seems like it might cause your repository to get bloated. Well, that's probably true, but hard drive space is cheap these days. Maybe a bigger concern might be if you end up with merge conflicts in your pod directory. I could see that being kind of troublesome to fix. So, what should I do? Well, that's really up to you. The CocoaPods folks generally recommend checking in your pods directory, but you know, as long as you and the rest of your team agree on the same practice, you should be okay. No, no, Dad, I meant what should I do about the Wallabies concert? I still don't know where to go with. Oh, that's easy. Go with the more popular one. Duh. Dad, you're so stuck in the 50s. <laughs>